this man was brutally murdered by a cannibal in the United States of America while he was asleep. He was stabbed and dismembered and had his heart and other organs eaten by his killers. After his killers had finished feasting on him like a hungry raging monster, he dismembered his body and threw some of it in a dustbin near a church in Alford County in Maryland. And then the killer went on to put his head and other parts of his body in a jar to store it for maybe later or maybe for an evening snack. This is a gruesome murder of 37-year-old Ghanaian student named Kujo Bonsafo. It was said that Kunjo Bonsafo was a degree holder, a master student who had come to the United States to chase a PhD. While he was attending classes and going about his PhD, he realized that there was something wrong with his visa, which meant it had to be revoked and which meant he had to be deported. And this devastated him. He was bombed by this. I can imagine anyone would. It meant he could no longer continue his education and it also meant that he would have to leave the United States back to Ghana, his home country. And as a 37-year-old man, I could imagine that he was the one footing his bills and probably mostly taking care of himself in that country. It's not stated if he was married with kids or if he had any wife in the USA, but he most likely may have had them back in Ghana. But that information was not available. So in the process of waiting to be deported because that was going to be his fate right now, he approached or met a professor by the name of Anthony Kinyua. Professor Anthony Kinyua was from a Kenyan descent. He and his family had migrated to the United States earlier on and they were now fully American citizens. And so when he heard of Kujo Bonsafo's situation and him being deported, he offered to give him a place to stay pending his deportation because he could not help his situation. Professor Kinyua opened his home to Kujo and told him that he could stay with them till whenever the government was ready to deport him. Now, Professor Kinyua also had his family. He had his wife and he probably had children, two of which is known and two of which is relevant to this case. He had a 23-year-old by the name of Alexander Kinyua and another son named Jared Kinyua. It's possible that Professor Kinyua had other children, but these were the only two sons that were mentioned in the entire story. And so it was said Kujo lived with them for nearly six weeks, six whole weeks, still pending his deportation, which meant at those points he was now a lot closer to the family of this man, his wife and his children and the man himself. It wasn't clear if he was attending classes by this time, but there's a chance that he probably was still chasing his degree, at the same time waiting to be sent back home. For six whole weeks, Kujo became very familiar to the Kinua family. He became closer to the boys, he became closer to the wife, and other members of the Kinua family who had pretty much opened their home to him and had welcomed him like a brother. However, on the 25th of May 2012, this would be the last time that anyone would see Kujo Bonsafo alive. It was said he was last seen going for a jog very early in the morning and he probably never returned. And after it was noticed he was missing and did not come back from his jogging, a police report was filed on him, declaring him a missing person. However, six days later, on the 31st of May 2012, a shocking discovery would be made in the basement of the Kinua family home by Jared Kinua, most likely the younger son of the Kinua family or might have been the older one, it's not really stated. It was said that Jared had gone to the basement and was doing some snorting around where it appeared that he may have stumbled upon what looked like human remains in a thing or a jar. And immediately, Jared called the attention of his brother, Alexander, asking him what these things were. And Alex, who was also confused, thought that they were animal remains. And he equally thought it looked odd. But he was sure that they were not human body parts and that there may have been body parts of an animal instead. But Jared was not convinced. He thought it was odd and he immediately informed his father, who did not waste time in informing the police. And immediately the police came. They had their very first suspect, who turned out to be 21-year-old Alexander Kinua, because according to sources, when the police came to the Kinua family home, Alexander had already thrown away the body parts and emptied the thing and already cleaned it up, making it look like there was nothing to see. And that was kind of like the first thing that gave it away. Why was he so quick to hide it, knowing the police were coming? And even if he said it was an animal remains, why didn't he just leave it at that? And that was not even all. It turned out that Alex was actually on bail. 
he had previously been arrested for nearly killing a fellow student in school, beating a fellow student up, and was even about to end the life of that student when people held him down from killing the said student. He was arrested and then released on bond, pending his day in court, only to have the guest in his home disappear overnight. The said body parts were recovered and the police were able to identify that that body part belonged to the missing 37-year-old Kujo Bonsavo. Alexandra was immediately taken into custody where he was questioned about what Kujo's remains were doing in his possession. That was when Alexandra confessed that he had killed Kujo himself and has eaten his heart and other organs before dismembering his body and throwing them in a trash can near a church. Kujo's remains were recovered and unfortunately deposited for burial. But for Alexander, however, it wasn't over. The police did some more digging and realized that this guy might have been insane. In fact, the case was taken to court and in the court, he was found guilty but not criminally responsible for the murder of Kujo Bonsavo. They realized that this young man was a walking red flag, was a walking demon. They began citing the case that was already pending about a student that he had blinded and hit with a baseball stick and was even about to kill before he was held out. In that case, it was said that Alexander had had a dream that his future victim, that is the boy he had blinded and was about to kill, had reported him to the police, was going to get him in trouble. And because of that dream, it was said Alexandra waited for this boy and attacked him, blinding him before attempting to murder him. All because of a dream. Although it's not clear what dream or what premonition that he had had for Kujo Bonsafo, who had lived with him for nearly six weeks, but he just said that while Kujo was asleep, he felt the urge to eat him up. He went to his room and instantly attacked him while he was asleep, eating his heart and part of his brain before dismembering his body and distributing it into bags and dumping them near a church before putting the other parts of the body in a jar or in a tin for maybe in case he gets hungry another time, probably for a midnight snack or something whenever he felt bored to do. During the entire court process, it was determined that Alexander was not fit to stand trial and he was instead taken to a mental hospital. Although after a while, he pleaded guilty and even though the court accepted his guilt plea, he was still not found criminally responsible for the murder of Kujo Bonsafo due to his mental health and that it would have been better he remained in a mental asylum forever. A lot of people have said that he should have been sentenced to the time he should spend in prison but people believe that he might also be a danger to other people in prison. Personally, I feel like if this guy is put in a mental asylum, he's more at risk to the society. There's a chance that he might run out of it or most likely escape from it or most likely do the worst while in a mental asylum. Because I believe for prison, is a lot more secured. He's going to be kept there for a longer time. I mean, Jeffrey Dahmer killed and ate his victims too, multiple victims, but he was kept in prison, even though he probably did not last. Alexander only ate one person, which meant he was just at the beginning of his cannibalistic career, which probably means being a 21 year old, he had so much more evil in him that has not been unleashed. So for such a person, I don't know if a mental health institution is best for him because all it takes is for him to get the urge again and from a lot of movies I've seen about mental institutions, it's something that they can easily break out of. Maybe he'll be in chains or maybe he'll be receiving the care that he needs that with time he might get better and fit to go back to society but I don't believe someone like that could ever be fit to come back into our society. I don't know. We get that people change, but that could be people who are stealing or who are prostituting or who are violent, not someone who can kill another human being, open up their hearts and eat their brains. Even if he is ever deemed fit to come back to society, I think everybody will look at him way differently. I feel like Alexander should have been kept in prison, not being given a chance to come back to society. However, I can guess that some people believe that he might change, though some people believe it might be a spiritual attack, some people believe that there might be something behind it, but we will just have to see. The thing is, if he's being released from prison, there's a chance it will be announced, but if ever he gets out of the mental asylum, not many people would know. 
he would just be another guy in the streets that might be good looking and attracting to a young girl who might find him appealing only for him to probably do it again and maybe this time he would not keep their body part in a jar he will most likely conceal it and bury it very well so that no one will find him this time around I personally think he's a danger to society and I personally think he should have been in prison where it's a lot more secured for him to be kept there. But you guys let me know what you think. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. You can turn on notification button so should there be any future updates, you'll be the first to get notified. Thank you.